Welcome to Graceful Warriors, where listeners lace up their combat boots and join Monica Hansen, a former Desert Storm Army Sergeant with seven years of service. Monica, along with her expert guests, provide real biblical advice for navigating the spiritual battles of life. The show begins now. Well, welcome back to The Graceful Warrior. I'm your host, Monica Hansen, and today we have in the studio a former guest of ours, a favorite guest of mine, Dr. Karen. And first off, I just want to say, don't forget to swing on over to my new webpage, monicahansen.com on there. You could find all of the podcast uh, episodes on there, my new book, You can check out that new book on Amazon or on Barnes and Nobles. And Karen Lydell, she is one of my favorite guests on this show. Her her teachings and her heart, where she goes with it, I know that it is something that we have all been on and going through. And to hear her encouragement just brings joy to me. So if you have not checked out Karen Lydell's episode, Uh, Check her out. She was with us back in December. And Karen is the founder and administrator of Brain Retrain, which provides solutions and individual families with organizational performance and relationship problems. She has been involved with many ministries, such as nonprofit program leadership, YWAM, Samaritan's Purse Operation, Christmas Child. I know you guys have heard about that. We have done it here in our state. It is a blessing to those kids that need those uh, those items. And she's also done Meals on Wheels, Embrace Grace, a pregnancy support organization, Silent No More, post-abortion support. They need to know that God loves them and that we'll forgive them in those decisions that they make. And then finally, the Compassionate friends. So please welcome Karen to the show. How you doing, Karen? I'm great, Monica. It is so good to see you again. Oh man, I have missed you. It's just, I've thought about you and your career and what you're doing out there. And I was just, I was got, I got to get it back. <laughs> I loved your, uh, the new intro we you like the music and the lightning. Yeah, that was great. I liked it. I had worked on that and I was like, I'm going to go back to my guy, Keith, and have him do his voiceover. Keith was actually, he did radio for 30 years and retired. And so it was amazing to go, Keith, can you help me out and do a big blast like that? So thank you so much. Yeah. So what's been going on in your life? What have you been doing? You know, I, I think I'm coming out of it, but I have been in the dreaded dry season. What? Tell me more. <laughs> I, and actually I was really surprised because, um, this is, I love what God does when you say that, well, that'll never happen to me. Yeah. Uh-huh. Or I don't have compassion or something. You're definitely going to go through that. Exactly. And so I did. It went on for months and, um, it was hard. I, I get it now when I never understood when people said they don't hear from God. And I said, how can you right. not hear from God? He's inside you. He speaks right. to me all the time. Well, when you're not hearing his voice and he just stays silent for a while for good purposes, not to punish us, it's, it was really uncomfortable. Um, yes. It went on far longer than I thought it should. And I, I finally went into a period of just deep repentance and remorse, alternated with being angry at him, accusing mm-hmm. him shouting at him, demanding, why, why, what have I done wrong? Or what's right. wrong? Why aren't you doing what you <laughs> say you will? And then, where repenting. are you? <laughs> yeah. And then having, and then feeling horrible about it, you know, the next right. day. And, um, I know you've, I, I think you've probably been through. I have been yourself. through the exact same thing where it just felt like, my prayers were just bouncing off of walls. And I'm like, hello, is there an echo in the room? Where (laughs) are you? What have I done wrong? You know, you feel like God is angry with you. And he's just like, I'm not listening to you right now. But we know that's not the story. So what happened with you? Well, I ultimately actually began questioning. Maybe I was listening to, uh, you know, the wrong voices in my head. I really had the sneaking worry about, am I still saved? 
Like, oh, have I done enemy. something? Yep. Yes. Have I done something yes. so wrong that he's turned his back on me and he doesn't want anything to do with me anymore? Oh my gosh. Uh, that you was know, the roughest. That was, cr that's crazy that you say that because mine, when I went through that dry spell, I was like, kind of going, well, where are you, Lord? Why, why aren't you answering my prayers? And, and I was talking to him about my younger son, who is like the prodigal son right now. And I was like, Lord, he's stubborn. He doesn't listen to this and that. And then I heard this voice in me saying, what did you do to me? And I started listening to that. And I was like, well, yeah, I understand now. And then I began to think about it. And I had even had to go to my mom and, and she was like, Monica, not the Lord. That's the Lord convicts. Satan condemns. Yeah. Condemning you. And I was like, ah, how could I fall for this? You know, so it's those voices that we fall for, you know, that Satan yeah. comes in and trap us. And I think, you know, to him, it's just a game. Yes, it is. So I like to win. <laughs> I like to right? beat him at his game. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, what really helped me, in fact, this was right before I was going back to Minnesota to, um, help out with the freedom conference that spirit life church in Alexandria does every single year. It's, it's an amazing conference. I just really recommend next year. If you guys can get out there, anybody, it yeah. sets you free. It takes you through a series of setting you free. And okay. this is kind of when this was just winding up. And so that's when I preached at the church that Sunday, this is what I taught on was how do you get out of this? So okay. I can only speak to what helped me. And what helped me was number one, um, I actually was reading the book of Job, coincidentally, right? <laughs> coincidentally. <laughs> and then it got to the part where God, right before he gives Job more than he ever had before, you know, just like really lavishes him and also gives his friends comeuppance for not mm -hmm. believing Job when Job said, I have not done anything. I don't know what is going on with God right now. But right. he also, you know, explained to Job who Job was in comparison to who God was. Wow. And it went on and on for mm -hmm. a long time of, and another thing, and by the way, right. Yep. And that's, that's what I felt like. I felt like, um, I was in Job's place and I, and I hope I'm getting all those blessings, but right. I recognize <laughs> who am I? to compare to God. And I know he loves me and all that, but who am I to demand one thing of him? Amen. He has already provided me salvation. He has already mm -hmm. given me an entire huge book full of his personality, full of his promises and examples too, of people who were so impatient. They want it now. They want it their way. And mm -hmm. you know, God's like, I don't play that way. Jesus don't right. play. <laughs> Jesus don't play. <laughs> so I had to repent of that and just decide, even if this is it, even if God's done using me in the way he has, I'm going to still read his word every day, seek him every day, um, praise him every day for everything he's already done. The fact mm -hmm. that I have a, a beautiful home, um, that brought me such peace to get to the point of acceptance of saying it might be over yeah. the way that I've yeah. known it. And if it is, that's okay because he's the potter and I'm the right. clay. Right. Y yep. You know, I've, I've found even in, in my dry season of um, just looking for the Lord and where are you, where's his presence that I've, I've began to find comfort even in just my worship time. There's like, even though it, I feel far away from you, I'm still going to praise you. And then that's where I found too, where I was able to put on my jams or my worship music and just say, well, if it feels like we're this far away, then I'm going to draw you into me and I'm going to worship and praise you and draw you into, you know, or, or however it goes, I draw close to the Lord and he draws close to me. And I found that that has been where I'm like, ah, there you are, you know, and it's, it's just amazing. I hear of people go, you know, well, I'm in a dry season right now and I don't know what it is, but I'm going to still keep my eyes on the Lord. And you're like, yes, that's fine. And Danny, but how are you getting out of that dry season? You know, what yeah. is it that you are to learn? Why are you there? You know, and that's where I think that we have to learn. Why are we there? What yeah. is it that we have to learn? 
or where is it that God wants to take us? You're, I think you were so right because we've, I, I feel like he's given me so much milk, you know, mm -hmm. in a bottle for so much of my Christian life. I've had so many reasons to praise him. Right. But, and then I've, I've gone through hard things, you know, that I lost a son, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I went through, you know, a horrible divorce and I've had, you know, issues with my kids as a result of that. Right. Um, but, uh, when, when everything is kind of stripped away, like my, my finances were scary. Um, right. my, where am I going to live was scary. Um, uh, um, just not hearing him was mm -hmm. very scary. All that was compounding, but by going through that for an extended period of time, it really does make you dive in deep and say, okay, mm -hmm. am I going to believe my circumstances or am I going to believe the, the unseen result that I know he's preparing for me. Am I going to believe his word or not? And so like you went into worship and I did mm -hmm. some of that too. I started playing worship music in the background at a very low level all the time. Mm -hmm. And I also decided I'm, I'm going to be in that word every single day with, with the right. intention of instead of demanding from him or proclaiming my promises, um, I was just going to simply seek to get to know him again and learn. Mm -hmm. And I just began opening my Bible every day saying, okay, Lord, I can't wait to learn from you today because I know you're in my heart. Mm -hmm. I know you're in this word. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, I'm going to decide to keep growing from where I'm at right now. And I'm going to stop expecting things other than good things, eventual good things. You know, there's right. this weird, weird place of balance where you're both accepting where you are now and mm -hmm. expecting any second something great, but not demanding it happen at any particular time that I right. think is magical. Yes. Yes. And, and you know what? Now, listening to you, I came across this thought of two is I would think that the Lord would go, if there is that distance, are you going to be faithful and still seek me out? You know, in that dry season that we all face throughout our lifetime, because it's not just once in a lifetime scenario. We will have those dry spells throughout our Christian walk until we go home with the Lord. You know, but it's, it seems like though too, it's like the Lord is going, are you going to draw close to me? Are you going to be faithful in the desert? Because if you're not going to be faithful in the desert season, how are you going to be faithful when the troubled waters come? And how can we have compassion on anybody else? As, as right. I full well know, if we haven't been through it and we think, well, it's your fault. It must be your fault. Like yeah. Job's friends. This yeah, is obviously exactly. your fault. If you're not hearing from God. Yep. And so, what and I went there with your myself. Life? Yep. Right. I went yep. there even with myself and getting to that point of recognizing that, um, I, this may be a test of my faith. Yes. And I, I decided I want, I want to succeed at it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's amazing too. It's, it's, it's recognizing that time where you're just going to go, okay, this is where the rubber meets the road here. Are you going to knuckle down and read the word or what are you going to do? Are you going to say, well, see, the Lord's not listening to my prayers, you know, which I have heard that side of it too, where people go, well, see, I was praying for my dad or my grandpa that he wouldn't die of cancer. And then, you know, it happens that they die and then they go, well, see, God doesn't answer prayers. And it's right. just like, no, you know, there is a reason for everything. Yeah. And we don't see it. And we see only our our present situation right now, today, you know, and yeah. to dig in and to choose the Lord, like Joshua said, choose this day whom you will serve, serve. you know, and I do that. I'm like, no, As for I me in my house, we will serve the Lord. Yes. Yes. And so it's like, no, I don't want to let the enemy continue to put the thoughts in my head. And I'm going to choose to serve the Lord. And I'm going to choose, like you said, to get into the word and let that be my sword against the enemy. Yeah. yeah. And um, it's just amazing to mm -hmm. yeah, going through the desert season. Now it is hard. Yes. It, it's, it's rough. Hard. It's rough. You're just like, 
It's almost like I would rather be like stuck in Alaska with no coat or something, you know, in the middle of winter. <laughs> but um, so you have um, you've got something coming up. Um, I was checking you out. You have got something up at the NCAA, the speaker conference. Yeah. National Christian that. Counselors Association, their yearly conference, and they, they invite some amazing speakers to um, come and present. And And I was actually like happy and surprised that I was one of the ones chosen. <laughs> oh my gosh. How did they, how did they choose you? I'm sure they, they could have chosen so many speakers, but how did they, did they find you? Do they know you? How well, did that I'm, come about? I'm a part of the organization. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and, and Dr. Phyllis Ar Arnos, actually, she's one of the, the creators of, of both the NCCA, but also the Arnos temperament profile system, which is a really cool assessment tool I use. Uh, she was my supervisor when I was getting my PhD. So oh, that, wow. yeah, that was really neat. But so, so yes, yeah. so, um, I had a conversation with one of the people who was putting it together and, talking about someplace else I was, I was speaking. And I just said, Oh, if you guys run out of speakers, let me know. And at first he goes, Oh, I think we're fully booked, but next year. And then he reached back out to me later and goes, Hey, we've had some dropouts. Can you jump in? I was like, absolutely. That is amazing. That's amazing. So yeah. what um, I hear you're talking about, what is nurture? What, what is it? What is when, nurture? When you're, your nurture messes up your nature. You know, nature. that whole thing, be, conversation between is it nurturing, like how you were raised, or is it your nature? What's uh -huh. more important? And it's really both, but both. But what I want to talk about is how we are born with that nature. And mm -hmm. the, the APS assessment is a great way to find out what your kind of inborn DNA nature is. Like, you mm -hmm. know, everybody's born. Some babies want to be touched and held. Some don't want their diaper changed. Some want it changed immediately. Some uh, smile at everybody. Some <laughs> others scowl. We're kind of born with just a, a personality. And right. then you're nurturing your family, especially those first five years of life. They can really warp who you are and your identity and how you wow. feel if, if you believe you are loved or not, if you believed you are worthy or you're deserving or that you have to earn everything is punishment getting ready to happen. Do you need to be fearful? So mm -hmm. what I'm actually going to do is show through pictures, um, my life and talk about different things that happened at the stage of my life. And then I'm going to have, because everybody there knows about temperament. I'm going to ask everybody to guess what they think my temperament is <laughs> based on what I show them in pictures. Um, and the interesting thing is that I've never found a picture of me as a child smiling, even through oh, wow. all through into adulthood. It wasn't until probably I had kids or, or maybe when I found out about partying, because I was a partier <laughs> when I was in my twenties, <laughs> there are some pictures of me smiling. Okay. Yeah. There. <laughs> and I talk about that too, about how we find ways to cope and, mm -hmm. to, and to feel okay about ourselves. And then in the mm -hmm. end, um, I'll reveal what my temperament is. And it's actually a far cry from the way people describe me as childhood because I was, I didn't feel safe being who I was. I had to be very cautious and not um, draw attention to myself when I was younger. It was very, everybody said, oh, she was so serious all the time. Oh, wow. Well, I, I had a very serious life going on inside of here. Right, right, right. So with that, that is um, happening in Tennessee, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? In, uh, yes, um, Chattanooga. Chattanooga. All right. Don't you just want to go choo choo? choo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So is there like tickets for those that are in Tennessee to grab or is there? You know, you can go to the um, National Christian Counselors Association website uh -huh. and then click on conference details. And then you should okay. be able to um, get some tickets. There's, there's going to be just some amazing speakers, um, you know, not just me <laughs> and incredible books. Um, yeah, I called myself amazing, huh? <laughs> right. You are amazing. Why do you think I have you? What, this is like your third, fourth time on here. <laughs> I love this program and I love you. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, it's, um, it's, um, you got like a list of, of guests coming to this to speak. And that is just 
Amazing. So other than that, are you are you still doing on the, the other show that you and I have talked about previously? Which one? The Sid Roth, if oh, I'm allowed to oh, say that. Oh, okay. So I, I had some some tentative conversations, right? So, so far, nothing um, has come of that other than I've met some great relationships. I've actually wow. I've been able to be a guest on the show. I was part, well, actually I was, I was part of, we taped five or six episodes of a show oh on gosh. praying in the spirit. And so a few of us were invited to be a part of that and actually pray in the spirit. So that, that is new since I talked wow. to you. Wow. Yes, that is new. Yeah. That's so I'm amazing. looking forward to that airing. That's going to be so cool. When does that air? I don't know. It takes, oh my gosh. it takes a few months for them to get everything edited and then the lineup. But right. if you do watch Sid Roth over the past yes. couple of months, you've probably seen me in the audience because I, I was blessed. I'm nearby. So when yeah. I get a chance, I go and sit in the audience and it's always such an amazing show. It's so much I fun. Bet. I bet. I've listened to, I've watched and listened to a few of his shows and, and yeah, just a guess. And it's, you know, we did just because that he's that, um, is it a messianic Jew when they believe that Jesus is? Um, yeah. So I had to make sure I say it right because we That's just right. did in my community, uh, um, myself and another gal, we hosted it for our church and we did a March for Israel. And we thought like, wow. if the government is not going to stand for Israel, then um, we're going to make a stand in our little town up, up here in the mountains. And so we did. We got other churches involved. We invited other churches. We went to, th did this march from a grocery store all the way down to our local park and held banners saying, we support Israel. We had flags of Israel, flags of America, and just marched throughout our entire town. And we had a guest speaker come on, and he was actually a former Muslim from Iran. And he converted, he came to the United States and converted to Christianity. And um, oh my gosh, this guy is a powerful, powerful uh, speaker. And um, so now, I mean, that whole event just put a, a new, I think a new, uh, I can't even describe, but it did something in me to pray for Israel more. Wow, like and, just sparked it. Or yeah, inspired you. There it is, inspired. <laughs> and it had just really kept me fervent on the prayers for Israel, prayers for Netanyahu, prayers for the IDF, you know. Yeah, and the people yeah. who are still being held hostage. Yes. And yes. you notice how it just disappears from the news. Yeah. And people don't realize that did not get resolved. Yeah, yeah. So it's praying for them. And a lot of people, I see it on social media too, is that a lot of people will go, well, I don't care about Ukraine. I don't care about Israel. I don't care about this. this and I just care about America. And you're like, if we don't care about Israel, yeah, we're going to turn around. It's going to be right in our face. You know, yeah. that's what happens to us. Israel is one of our greatest allies. I mean, even yeah. from just that perspective, we need to care. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's it's amazing. But I just I love having you on. It's it's amazing. You always have a seat. Anytime you're like, I got to share this, Monica. You're always I, have a seat on this show. Thank you so much, Monica. It's it's always such a pleasure. And I love how many people you reach. And I love the fact that you um, have been a military member. I oh, appreciate thanks. your service and uh, rising to the rank of a sergeant as a woman, too. I think right? it's just very impressive. We go girls. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks Karen for joining us on today's episode. I hope you have a great day. You have to let me know how your um, October conference went and um, let me I know will. when your I'll episode come back and tell you all about it. Yes. And let me know when your episode comes up on the Sid Roth. Okay. And we'll have to share that. Thanks for joining us on Coffee Break with God on the Graceful Warrior Podcast. I hope you have a blessed day. And remember, it's a battlefield out there. Lace up your combat boots. Thank you for tuning in to Graceful Warriors. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and updates, please visit the websites, thegracefulwarrior.com or monica-hanson.com. 
Until next time, remember to lace up those combat boots.